wait for it to start. Okay, welcome parents and to our fourth session of yes. our fifth, oh my gosh, our fifth already. So we've been doing this for a month already. The Parenting in Quarantine webinar series for parents. And today we're gonna talk about online safety for children. This topic was not included in the, um, in the survey that we sent out to parents uh, a month ago, but we have received many questions about this topic. And today we have a surprise guest speaker at the end. So then, okay. So first we wanted to share with you some, um, some statistics about the use of social media and internet by children. And this came from internetmatters.org. Um, it says the average child posts around 26 times a day on social media, but only six out of 10 followers are real friends. So we want you to reflect a little bit if you know what social media does your child use? Do you share their account login details? Do you follow any of these accounts? And is your child worried about the number of followers in their accounts? Some other facts is that one in 10 or fewer parents say that they don't know how to use some of the more risky websites and apps. So what apps and social media do you often use? Of course, we're all used to Facebook, maybe Twitter, but now there's plenty of other applications that are available for our children and we don't even know. What kind of online behavior are you modeling for your kid? Does your child have access to your device? Is your information protected? Forty-eight percent of parents believe that their children know more about the internet than they do, and 73 of children agree. I think this is this is facts. They children know more about many different social uh, media that are new to all of us, and they are very familiar. I think TikTok is the I know I, I don't the most popular one right now, but there's others that we don't even know about, and they're already using it. If you need help with your device, who do you ask for it? A technician or probably your child. How do you know about parental controls? Who assists you with the settings of your household devices? These are questions for all of us to reflect. So while three quarters, 76% of secondary school children are using smartphone regularly at home, just over quarter, 29% use their phone at school. So one in three children hide websites that they've been visiting from parents, while one in five changes social media safety settings enforced by their parents. Three out of 10, so 30%, secondary school pupils admit that they regret things that they have said online. Talking, right? How you make agreements with your child about the time they can start having a cell phone? It depends on the family. Some, some children start having cell phones at seven. Some others make agreements about, okay, when you go to secondary school. Do you ever revise the search history of your devices? Do you consider your parental controls are strong enough? So these are some reflections and questions that we wanted to ask you before starting our, our webinar today, because we don't often think about them. So online, of like having an online uh, resource at home, of course, has a lot of benefits for children. And mostly these times that we are in quarantine and at home, they have access to more information and resources than we did in our time. We had uh, encyclopedias and books, and of course they also have that available, but now information for them is just there. Um, we have the learning experiences through e-learning and in the med, we are very lucky to have those, those resources and most of them, we use them even before the quarantine and stay connected with, with family and friends. This is 
super relevant for families in the Met as well, as many of you are from other countries and your families are abroad. So this is a, a very useful tool to stay connected with them. But it also has some risks. For example, um, there might be adults targeting children for sexual purposes on social media, gaming and messaging platforms. Maybe there's harmful content like violence, xenophobia, inciting self-harm, misinformation. And misinformation is very relevant with the coronavirus these days. And also cyberbullying from peers and even strangers. So Ms. Batista is going to share with you some in more depth some of these online issues um, so that you know. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here with us today. Is my audio okay, Roxana? Yeah? Yes. Indeed. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, so as Ms. Roxana mentioned, information and communication technologies offer many benefits. Um, however, they also have a few down downsides, such as cyberbullying and exposure to inappropriate content and some others that we are going to discuss as well. So, um, inappropriate content. As children become more independent online, it's possible that they may come across things which are inappropriate for their age or stage development. Using filters to block explicit content and having frank conversations are just a few ways you can help them uh, and equip them with tools to deal with this. Showing openness and a trusted relationship also helps children to feel confident about telling you whenever they have they, they come across with inappropriate content. Okay, so it's important that you can um, um, keep this dialogue constantly open and reinforcing, you know, um, advice and try to be on top of, of, of whatever they're doing on the web. Another issue might be privacy and identity theft. Just like adults, children may be at risk of having their online identity stolen and misused. It can be difficult to maintain a child's privacy as they may not understand what information is safe to share online or what default privacy settings are on the sites and devices they are using. So it's important to talk to them about privacy. Make emphasis many times, as I said before, this is an ongoing conversation. It's not just about saying one time. You need to reinforce this once in a while. Uh, and remind them about what information they shouldn't reveal. You know, their names, their address, what school do they attend, and this information. Uh, clean up apps on device that are no longer in use. You can uh, you can do this thing once in a while to, to take your devices and you review what are those apps that you're no longer using. Uh, so this will stop this app holding on um, to personal data. Uh, encourage your children to use passwords and remind them not to share them with friends or with um, Review privacy settings on social networks. You can. Uh, if, if your child, it's about, um, I would say like uh, around eight or nine, this is something you can start doing with them so they can be aware that there are privacy settings that they can trust and they can um, control to manage uh, what information is being shared. Ms. Batista, um, can you mm -hmm. please check your audio? Because many parents are, are making comments about problems with audio. My my audio, yeah. Um, can you listen to me now? Okay, I'm using this microphone and I'm not sure if it's working but properly. I can listen, but um, maybe if you can comment. Se oye entrecortado. Okay, maybe the connection. Oh, I'll try to talk a little bit slower, slowly. Yeah, okay. So, um, sorry for that, you know, technology difficulties. So, um, cyberbullying. 
okay? Cyberbullying is one of the most far-reaching issues facing children right now. And it is a growing concern. But the best way to keep children safe online is to take an active interest right uh, from the start. Okay, accompanying them from the start, from the beginning, they start navigating and using technology. It's a good way to guarantee that they feel safe and, and that they can count on you anytime they have to deal with something uh, unknown or something that they find, might find disturbing. Um, help your child to look closely at what people say online and not to believe everything that they see and read. Uh, encourage your child to let you know if something they have seen or read has upset them, okay? So it's like keeping your communication channels open and uh, so they can, they can know that they can rely on you every time they have concerns about what they've seen on the web. Um, sexting, it's sexual messaging and image sharing between children and their boyfriends or girlfriends or people they've met online that can have unwanted consequences for children. Is the audio fine? Roxana? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, explain what can happen to an image once it's shared, okay? We always tell students at school that once everything that is shared our devices no longer belong to us okay because we lose control about what we share um, talk to your child about having some responses ready if they are asked to send explicit images you can you can make it through a role play or through a conversation you can ask them what would you say if somebody if a friend or someone you don't know asks you for a photograph or something Okay, you can you can rehearse those responses um, and tackle peer pressure and help them understand that the results of giving into pressure could be much worse than standing up to it. Okay. Um, self harm, it's another issue that causes a lot of concern because children can use the internet to educate themselves about self harm and connect with pro-self-harm communities. First of all, it's important to stay calm. I know this is, this is something that might be scary uh, for all parents, but it's important to stay calm and try to talk openly about it. Uh, I, we know it is a difficult topic and it needs to be dealt with sensitivity, okay? So try to avoid taking control it, this might be like an initial reaction, but now that we're discussing this in advance and you can think of, you know, ahead of time, how can I, how, if I have to deal with this, how can I, how would I react? Try, try to, to avoid taking control, build their confidence and show you trust them. And also it's important to find out why they are doing this and avoid giving ultimatums okay that that's not helpful because uh, it's like like warning or saying that you're gonna um give them a consequence for for doing that sometimes these self-harm behaviors uh are related to emotional suffering and uh, low self-esteem low self-concept and, and those are things that need to be explored in depth to understand where is this need of harming yourself from. Okay, so it needs to, to be taken care of with a lot of sensitivity. Online grooming. Um, grooming is a word used to describe uh, people befriending children in order to take advantage of them for sexual purposes. The key thing here to remember is that we have to equip children with the right advice to make smart choices online. Um, we can minimize the risks of exposure to this situation through um, ongoing conversations, being on top of what our children are doing on the web, 
uh, accompanying them through, you know, through the process of exploring new apps and, and, and social media. Be present from that, for them. Uh, and reinforcing the idea that you are always there for them in case they have to, to deal with something that doesn't, something that makes them feel an insecure or afraid. Online reputation, uh, this, this is something that, you know, some, sometimes children, um, we have to teach them to, to, to understand this concept. A child's online reputation can be affected by what they publish and post online. Um, statistics show that although children are taught to think before post and share aware, it can be hard for them to make smart choices sometimes. And sometimes it's hard for them to restrain from posting things which they may uh, later regret. As, as Roxana mentioned at the beginning, that some statistics show that 30% of, of teenagers regret of what they, they have posted at some time, at, at some point. So it's important to continue reinforcing the idea that uh, what they and others share about them can impact in a positive or negative way. Their friendships and relationships, their, emo their, their educational and career prospects, and even their future credit rating can be affected by our online reputation. It's hard to think about this, you know, uh, at a very young age, so they need to understand this and we need to help them um, to, to understand what, what the, you know, the footprint they, they leave on the web, how can, they, how can that impact them, either in a positive way or in a negative way. Well, pornography, when we think about online issues, pornography is always you know, the first one to come to our mind. Online pornography and sexualized imagery are easily accessible nowadays. It's just at the the tip of our, our fingers to just uh, put in the search a word and you can get um, to anything inappropriate, okay? Uh, as a result of their curiosity or by accident, children can find pornography very easily on the internet. Depending on their age, it can be upsetting or confusing as pornography displays an unrealistic image of sex and relationships. And this is something uh, when, when, you know, having this conversation about pornography can be difficult, especially depending, especially uh, with young children. But it's important to let them know that pornography doesn't show a realistic picture of sex and relationships. There is a website, uh, internetmatters.org. They have a lot of resources, many tips and videos um, about you know, people sharing their experience, a lot of resources for parents to, to guide uh, their children in an assertive way. So if you ever have to deal with any of these issues, uh, you can go to internetmatters.org and there are, um, you know, the definitions, uh, tip for parents, and in case you have to deal with the situation, how to manage the situation. So there are many resources in that website. Um, another issue is radicalization. Children can be introduced to ideas online that might, may be considered extreme and become radicalized. It's important to remind them that we do not believe in everything we see or hear or read, especially on the web. And if you have to come across uh, with this situation, remember to be approachable, be calm, and don't get angry. Remember that, especially with teenagers, they are trying to, you know, they are developing their identity, and, and part of, the, their, of their identity has to do with their with the philosophy about life and their values and their, 
uh, their opinions and concerns about uh, you know world issues. So um, radicalization has to do with extreme ideas, and they can really upset us as adults if we you know uh, we have to get into that argument with with a child. So don't be confrontational. Encourage children to share their ideas and opinions with tolerance and respect. Another concern is screen time. Okay, screen time is a balanced use of screens. Uh, uh, sorry, a balanced use of screens can offer children key benefits to help them learn, explore, and interact. Because not everything about you know the internet is negative. There are also many benefits and positive things. Uh, but the truth about screen time is that not all screen time is created equal. So it's important to encourage children to have a healthy balance between passive screen time and interactive screen time. There is no safe level of screen time, but it doesn't mean that all screen time is harmful. Um, one size does not fit all. And when it comes to screen time, it's more about getting it right for your family needs. As we, as we were saying uh, last week, uh, these things uh, need, comes from agreements uh, that are established with children. I mean, at the, at the end, parents have the last word, but children tend to respond in a more positive way if they feel uh, that they can participate in the discussion and they can give their opinion about certain things. Okay. So this can be discussed with them, but of course, the final word is yours. Uh, how to recognize when screen time is too much? Here are some signals. Your child tries to get on, a, on the device first thing in the morning. Uh, they complain or throw temper tantrums when you tell them they, they have to turn it off or they cannot use it. They are always thinking or talking about favorite shows, games, or videos. It, it seems like this is the only interest that they can manage. You've caught your child sneaking a device or lying about how long he or she has been on, on the device. Or if you remove the device as a consequence, uh, they, 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 in a sneaky way, they take it out and use it without you noticing. Um, your child seems to only laugh, smile, or show signs of happiness when using a screen or seems frustrated or anxious when they are not using the device. They use the device to feel better after having a bad day. They don't seem interested in other things, especially things that they used to enjoy before. Uh, it's constantly asking to use the device and keeps wanting more and more screen time. You may notice that they appear tired throughout the day or are not getting enough sleep and usually complain of headaches or neck pain. So these are signals that you need to take into consideration, keep in mind, and if you identify any of them, then check if it might be related to uh, screen time. Now Roxana is going to continue with some uh, recommendations to protect your child online. Yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about first about the first we're going to talk about the practical strategies that we can implement at home to protect our children online. So you may set up parental controls, you may turn on safe search on your browser, set up strictly privacy settings and online apps and games, and cover webcams when not in use. These are like the practical strategies. And of course, there's more things that you can do as a family. So our speaker, our guest speaker is going to talk more in depth about this slide. <laughs> what is really important is that as families, you create healthy habits and safe online habits. So one strategy is to create family tech agreements involving your child or your teen about how are you going to use devices, um, how much time they're going to stay online, uh, what sort of apps they're going to use or what sort of websites they're going to use, if you're going to be there or not. You may also create device-free spaces and times in your house, such as eating, sleeping, playing, schoolwork. Well, they need to use a device, but only 
for school purposes. Um, but this will also help the devices to not be in the middle of your relationship. Help your child learn how to keep personal information private, especially from strangers. So you can have these conversations about how online they need to be even more aware about the concepts of private and public. Being public something that we can share with many people and private things very personal that we share with a few people that we really trust and that are really close to us. Um, some people are not who they say they are and mostly online. Remind your children that what goes online stays online. That was uh, what Denisel was talking about. Um, it, more, more often the youngest students, they are not aware that this stays on the internet forever and anyone can have access to this information anytime. Spend time with your child or teen online so you can explore websites together, social media, games, and apps. It's, it's unreal to keep children away from technology these days, so it's, we need to make them part of our lives and our family uh, interactions. You can talk to your teen on how to report inappropriate content. We're going to talk about that later. And you may use uh, websites such as Common Sense Media that has great advice for apps, games, and entertainment for different ages. The resource that we really like, and actually uh, it has been used in the school for upper elementary, is um, Google Guide for Online Safety. When we upload the PDF version of this presentation, you can click on this link and have access to that website. And it's called Be Internet Awesome. So they they have like five different areas that they reinforce through this program with different activities for school and families. So the first one is Be Internet Smart. And it has to do with sharing with care. So information travels fast online, faster than in real life. And without some careful considerations, we can find ourselves in situations that may have lasting consequences. So if in our lives being impulsive sometimes brings some consequences that are not comfortable, imagine online. So what is the solution? Learning how and what to share with people we know and people we really don't know. And I have, I have doing the, doing the um, exhibition, project this time as a mentor, I found out that some students have their own YouTube channels. And it's very interesting and we can promote these initiatives as parents, but you know, making sure that they understand what can we share with our families and friends and what can we share out to the internet. The second uh, area is be internet alert. Don't fall for fake. And this is super relevant now that we are on a um, quarantine. It's important to help kids become aware that what they see online isn't always true, real, or reliable. And this goes for us too, because there's a lot of fake news right now about the current situation and many other things. So it is really important to take care of ourselves and make sure that whatever we are reading or sharing is real information. Figure out what's real and what's fake is vital to online safety and also citizenship because we can spread, you know, um, fake information that is not helpful for anyone. The third one is be internet strong, secure your secrets. So the security of your information, accounts, and devices is just as important as your privacy. We need to teach our children how to create strong passwords that and, and the commitment to not share them is vital because sometimes, oh, I shared my uh, my password with my best friend or only with, a, with our, you know, girls group or boys group. And you really need to take care of your information online. And this is a this is a lesson for life. Um, it protects your family devices, identities, um, reputations and relationships. This one is my favorite, the internet kind. It's cool to be, it's cool to be kind. So the internet can be and is used to spread both like inspiring and uplifting information, but also shocking and hateful commentary and opinions. Unfortunately, 
the internet itself make no difference between what is kind and what is cruel. So that's where we come in as adults and as a guide. Families are powerful influencers for their children and they can help them take the high road by exemplifying the concept of kindness. How? Supporting your friends and diffusing drama and cyberbullying. So it's it's very important this about cyberbullying and drama. Uh, someone is trying to present. Okay. Do you see the presentation? Sorry, someone is uh, sharing their screen. Mr. McBride, maybe? Is he here? Uh, okay, do you see the screen? The power, Miss. Miss Batista, are you sharing the presentation? Yeah. I, I can see it. Can you see it? Oh, some people Let don't. Me. Some people do. Uh -huh. No? Let me. I'm sorry. I'm going to share it again. Thank you. Um, who were in? There you go. No, that one before. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, so now you can. Okay, super. So yes, families are. Now that we talk a lot about influencers and YouTubers and Instagrammers, guess what? Families are the most powerful influencers in their child's life. So we need to. We need to teach them and model how to be kind in our lives and also online. And the last one is be internet brave. When in doubt, talk it out. So it's important for kids to understand that they're not on their own when they see inappropriate content or behavior online, which makes them feel uncomfortable. So we will always encourage them to share this information with us as parents or with an adult they trust in school, a teacher, a counselor. And it doesn't have to be only related to them. It can also be related to something that happened to a friend or someone they know. So we have a guest speaker today. Um, I don't know if he's here. Let me check. Okay, today we have uh, Mr. John McBride, who is a uh, technology coach in the school and he's going to share with us some information about online safety and useful strategies that you can implement at home as well let's just wait for a minute when he joins us in the meantime roxana maybe uh, we can discuss some questions if they can write their questions in the chat and we can start our discussion while Mr. McBride, uh, he's, he's, he's teaching a class, so as soon as that was going to be over at 2.40, he will join us. Do you have questions? Or comments? Comments are also welcome. Okay, we have a comment here. It says, excellent presentation, lots of things to take care of. What filters or parental control apps are recommended? Thank you, Mr. Alejandro. Yes, we need to take care of this as we are, we are spending more and more time online these days. It was relevant before and it's becoming more relevant now. So, it's very important that we as parents also model online behavior for our children because they are watching us too at home. How is our online behavior? So um, it is important to follow these recommendations and always um, model for them what you expect them to do. So what are the parent control? Mr. McBride is going to share with us some apps and tools that, he, that the school and he recommends for parent control. Is it possible to put some parental controls on YouTube? I think Mr. McBride can also help us, but you can you can add parental control on your browser. 
So it will involve every website that they have access to. So either it could be on Safari or Google Drive. There's some browsers for users to do it. Two things here, like the, the practical things that we can do to ensure that they have some controls online. And we also want to reinforce like the behavior, how we as a family manage to um, support them on their experience being online by, as I mentioned before, like making some agreements for a device and online like use at home or setting some device free times at home or talking about like what is what is um, appropriate or not for them to watch. Mr. McBride just joined, so welcome. Mr. McBride, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you can share your screen with us. Is that okay? Okay, sure. Good, excellent, welcome. Thank you for being here with us today. No problem. He, he's the expert, so very important that he joined us today. Um, okay. Cool, you can see that, right? Uh, no. Yes. No, I cannot see it. Comment here, yes, can you see it? Yeah, you've got my screen? Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, all right, hi everyone, thanks for coming along. I'm gonna make this really quick because I know we're almost at the end of this. Um, I'm just gonna chat about a couple of things on online safety from my perspective as the elementary school technology coach. Uh, I've got six kind of general topics, but like three of them basically are all on one slide. So I'm gonna quickly chat about parental monitoring, uh, how our kids, we teach them to be digital citizens, a few different areas on cyber security, and then just basically the, the, the communications between you guys and us being open is really important. So, in terms of parental monitoring at school, if you have a child who is in grade three to 12, then you can get Google Classroom report, reports, and they'll be sent out to you, um, it seems like every few days they tend to send them out, and they come in email form, and they're super detailed. They will tell you the things that your child currently has overdue, or things that are kind of uh, missing work, I think it calls it. Uh, they say what's coming up soon, so if there's assignments that are due in the next few days, and just like general action and activity that's happening in their Google Classroom. So if you've got a child who's in grade seven and they're in like, uh, what, like eight, nine different subjects, different Google Classrooms, you'll be getting information from each one of those, just kind of summarize saying, um, your child has had this message in PE this week, this message in music, et cetera, et cetera. There's an assignment due in, des in design class on Friday. Um, and then if your child's in grade four or uh, under, you can look at the iPad screen time to find out more detailed information about exactly what your child is doing. It's not um, super, super detailed, but you will be able to see uh, like the number of hours that your child is spending on their iPad every week. Um, also, it breaks down like applications that are being used, so it'll show like the most popular app that's being used, um, the percentages that your child is spending on each application. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, what kind of notifications they're receiving as well, sorry. So if they're getting um, like 100 notifications from Hangouts every day, like we've noticed some of our third and fourth graders were doing because they were going a little bit crazy uh, sending each other messages as kind of like a chatting, texting kind of version uh, option, you'll be able to see that and realize that they're having way too many notifications as opposed to the, you know, the email or the Google Classroom information they need for their learning. So anyway, you can access that by going into their iPad, clicking settings, clicking general, and you'll wait, I think just below general, you'll see an option called screen time. You can do it yourself as well on, on your iPhone if you have one. 
it's a little bit scary how much screen time I'm looking at at the moment myself. Um, so we try and teach our kids to be digital citizens. Uh, before we went to the virtual school experience, we were running regular lessons in our elementary school classes. Um, you've already seen, I believe, some of the, the Google program that is set up, the Be Internet Awesome, that's the one that we use. So we teach kids how to be these things, how to be safe online and alert and strong and kind and brave. Um, it's a really awesome program. And since we've gone to the virtual school experience, we've been doing them on a needs basis. So for example, uh, a week or so ago, we did some sessions with grade three children who are learning about um, communication as their current unit. So we did a lesson on online communication and how to like communicate appropriately and safely online. Things like, um, like how you can actually use an emoji to set the tone of a message that you, someone might have uh, taken two different ways. Or um, how you need to be sometimes formal in a, in a piece of writing and in other times you can be more informal. Um, what else, what else? And yeah, all of these lessons that we do on digital citizenship are basically just conversations. So if you can have the similar kind of conversations with your children, you'll realize that they actually do know all of the answers already. And just having these conversations brings it to the forefront of their mind. So talking about things like being really careful as to what you click on and to which websites you go to and letting them know that if they are ever online and they feel like they're in something a space that makes them feel uncomfortable or unsafe, that they should be doing things like coming and talking to you, like talking to a trusted adult. And also we talk about taking screenshots of these things so that they can show someone what's happening. Um, but yeah, it's basically just, just chatting and keeping having conversations about these things. So cybersecurity is kind of like a buzzword of, I guess, the decade, last decade as well. Um, and it's really important now with, uh, with all of us being at home, online, all the time. So in terms of school, we have so much uh, different layers of protection over our, our, our devices and our internet at school. And even though our kids are now using our devices at home, a lot of those layers are still in place. So we have, one in our mobile device management system, we have an out of school restriction setting. And we can see all of the different blocks that we would normally block to take place on our Wi-Fi, but also out of school on that device. So regardless of the fact that they're at home on your personal Wi-Fi, certain websites will be blocked, um, certain uh, sites will be filtered out and they won't even be able to see the images that are on them and things like that. We also have uh, flags set up so that if a child is like Google searching something that is dangerous or um, potentially uh, could be an issue, for example, uh, searching something about drugs or searching something about uh, like dangerous weapons, like how to make a bomb, or even things like, like uh, feeling depressed. When those kind of searches are made on our school devices, we get a flag, flag message from our mobile device system that tells us this person at this time on this device has searched for this uh, flagged terminology. And by, from when that happens, we can then speak to the counselors or um, the parents or whoever, whoever kind of needs to be in the loop that's something is being searched for in those cases. Now, even though these settings are in place at home, they're only in place on the school devices. So that's a really thing, a really important thing to be mindful of. The school device that your child has is potentially a lot more safe and secure than the personal devices they have at home, their own computers or iPads or laptops or phones. So when you're not on a school device or when your child is not on a school device, they're gonna be they're gonna be they're gonna have the potential to go to a lot of things that they wouldn't have been able to go to on these, these school devices. Um, so that's where you guys just, I guess, need to be physically monitoring that yourself and checking things like history and having eyes on the screens. And like in the classroom, I don't like it when kids have their back to a wall when they're on a device because then their, their screen is to the wall and no one else can see it. That would be a small kind of tip to um, keep in mind in the, in the home. If your child's always like up against the wall, up against the couch and you can't see their screen ever, then it's, um, something you might want them to talk to them about being a little bit more open about. And for all of us, being super mindful about what we click on and sign up to, like now more than ever, with again, with all of us being at home and on devices more than normal, we're kind of like the, the VIP lounge for, for hackers and, and fish, people that are sending phishing emails. They've just got all of the, 
I guess, all of their target audience right in front of them. So being super, super careful as to what you do click on and when you get an email or when you're on a website, you're making sure it's secure and you're not accidentally signing up to something that you don't know what it is or clicking on something that you don't know exactly where it's come from. Now, with those kind of things in, in place that we have, it's also important that I tell you about um, kind of the ethical issues. And we have another pro, uh, software in place called Sophos, which um, I guess kind of with us being the big brother over these devices, it makes sure that we are an um, ethical big brother, I guess. So there's no way that we could actually control the cameras of any of our devices or open any any applications like FaceTime that have a camera and certain kind of things like that that would be crossing those lines. So as, a, as an IT department at school, we do have a whole lot of systems in place that we can keep an eye on our, our learners and what they're doing online, but also we don't have kind of, I guess, full access in any way. Um, cool, I'm going really fast through this as planned. So um, definitely let us know if you think that something's not working. So for a range of different things. If, if a laptop or an iPad that the school has sent you is not working for whatever reason, speak to the IT department, speak to myself, and we can either replace them or fix them or, find, or help you find the solution to get them working. We're doing that all the time. So the next slide has our contact details. Um, if you, so just last week, we had a parent uh, message us telling us that their child had been told about a, like a really dangerous website, basically, where they had, um, their child had been told about this by a friend and they had then clicked on it and it was pretty much like an online meet other people around the world via your camera website and you would just randomly click and you would be partnered up with someone else in the world, you're looking, they're looking at you through your camera, you're looking at them through their camera. The idea is that you're meant to be able to like make friends with random people but with the people we have in the world, a lot of the people that use these kind of websites are not people that we want to be looking at or talking to our children. So the girls unfortunately saw things that they didn't want to be seeing and that parent let us know that website and we immediately blocked it on all of our devices. There was a fifth grade girl and we now have that device, that website blocked on every device from kinder up until um, grade 12. So if anything like that happens, get in touch with us. We can literally block those kind of things within minutes. And of course the counselors I've mentioned here because they're the ones in charge today and they're the ones that you might want to talk to with sensitive subjects. We do. I've talked to Yenisal earlier this year about things I've found on a um, child's uh, internet history that I thought was worrisome and then she's got in touch with that child and those parents and things. And of course the PS admin for protocol stuff. And that's pretty much me. So I was going to questions after that and these are the contact details. Parents Web at the Met is anything kind of IT department related. That's my one. If you wanted to um, ask me any questions or let me know of any issues that I might be able to help you with. And yeah, I think I can, shall I stop sharing my screen now, ladies? Yeah. Danny said you're muted. You need to unmute yourself. <laughs> Sorry, you. I forgot about my, my microphone. Um, thank you, John, for joining us today with this super important information. Uh, Mm -hmm. we, we, I think we still have a couple of minutes for questions or comments. Some parents were asking about parental controls, how that they can um, enhance them at home. Uh, and thank you for reinforcing uh, the idea that the, we have we, we we have put in place at school very strong, you know, settings for you know uh, avoiding and most of the situations and websites that might be dangerous, but that's something that parents also uh, need to do at home with their own uh, network, right? Can you clarify about that, John? And, and sorry, so in terms of parents setting up those kind of uh, safety rules on their network? The, no, I mean the settings for the network, like, you know, when, because we've noticed that some of, of these child, uh, some of, of the children, when they access um, inappropriate information or content, uh, and what you've noticed when you revise the history at school that we, uh, IT does that once in a while, what they, uh, what they access usually are after school hours. So that that's like when they, where, where their household networks are being used. 
Mm. Well, previously we didn't have the at home restrictions all turned on because we were, I don't know, we weren't on the whole of the virtual school set up, but now pretty much all of the restrictions that we have at school are also set up at home. So everything that would normally be blocked at school should also be blocked at home. Uh, yeah. Recommend any specific parental control apps? Not off the top of my head. I've, I've looked this up before, um, and the best one that I could find was the one that's actually made by Google that was linked to the um, the slides you saw earlier, the Be Internet Awesome uh, slides. They, they have one. I'll find the name of it now. But the last time I looked, it wasn't available in Panama. It, may, it might have changed. There's a whole lot of different... I haven't... I don't have kids myself, so I'm kind of talking from my, not my person. Her says that she used Circle, but it's not that friendly. Circle. Okay, I'm just searching for the name of this Google one that I will recommend. Families. You can, I know that also if, if you, like you have an internet provider here in Panama, you can call the technical support and you can request uh, stronger settings or you can request guidance to set up your parental controls, not only for navigation, but also for the, the TV. That is also something that we, sometimes we forget about and there's a lot of information, you know, uh, in a proper information on TV. So you can also activate your parental controls and your uh, cable cable system. So you can all, you can call your internet or cable provider, and you can request the service. Okay, the one I would recommend that I was, couldn't find the name of, I've just posted in the chat. It's called Family Link, and like I said last time I. At the start of the year, I looked this up. It wasn't available in Panama, but just looking it up on my phone, on my app on my phone now, it looks like it is available in Panama. I can download it right now. So give that one a look into because it's it's uh, seems to be super user friendly, and it's made by Google, so you can pretty much trust that it's going to be good. You can also set up. Um, with, if you have personal iPads that your kids have and yourself you have at home, you can set up your within your own screen time settings your kids' iPads to be linked to your iPad, and then you can set them all to be um, to turn off at certain times in the evening and to, to block certain apps during certain times and things, all through the screen time section of your own device, iPhone or iPad. Yeah, I, I think that's very useful. That That's what I've heard some people do, and they find it really, you know, uh, uh, easily to manage because if you can, from your own device, you can uh, keep an eye on your child's device. So uh, it's an easiest way to track what they're doing. Uh, so it's a good way um, to, is, to keep an eye. This is the... Uh the app version of what I just sent through, Family Link. Family Link. Okay. Well, are there any other questions or comments? Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, John, for joining us. This is, uh, well, a common conference on the Kilimanjaro Challenge. I think we're still making some, some steps and you already made it in three days. <laughs> okay, so this, um, this presentation will be downloaded in our YouTube channel. So you can go back to it and also um, the PowerPoint presentation will be saved as a PDF, so you can also have access to that. Thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon, and see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.